Hi everyone and welcome to my childhood bedroom. So like a lot of people, I'm visiting family for the first time in a while and this is actually a special occasion because it's the first time I have filmed anywhere except the living room of my apartment. Oh god. Okay, I'll stop that. Yeah, it's better when I can only kind of see you. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm used to. First of all, I thought it would be fun to do a little bookshelf tour of the stuff that I still have here in my childhood home. I have not lived here in well over a decade, so this is sort of a mishmash of stuff that is still left. I did go through these shelves a number of times in the past, although not for a while, so this is kind of what's left. As you'll see, there are actually three pretty big bookshelves in this room. They are not completely full, but other than giving you guys a little bit of a tour, what I want to do today is actually to unhaul some books from these shelves and get it down to just one of these shelves that you see behind me because, uh, you know, my family would maybe like to do some other things with this space other than just hold all my books. So now it's gonna be a good time to decide what I'm going to maybe ship to myself, what I'm gonna get rid of, and what will stay here. So one thing that is going to drive me crazy during this bookshelf tour and might irritate you as well, these books are not in any order. That's because this room got painted about 10 years ago and all the books just came off the shelves in an unorganized way, went into boxes and then came back out onto the shelves. Nobody has ever sorted them since then. I mean, nobody means me, but still, I never sorted them or anything after that. So you have books in a series that are just gonna be in different places, books by the same author that are gonna be in different places, and it's just a total mess. Um, but you know, I thought I would keep it real for you guys instead of pre-organizing them. All right, so let's take a look and get rid of some books. All right, it's hard to figure out where to start because there's really no order to these books, but let's start up here with this bookshelf. So, yeah, we have, well, this is gonna be worse than I thought. There's really a lot of stuff mixed in here. This seems to be mostly the Devery Cycle by Catherine Kerr, which is sort of a Celtic-inspired, long-running fantasy series that I really liked when I was younger. The first one, I think, is Dagger Spell. We're really getting a lot of glare here, sorry. Um, I think those will probably stay here. We have The Dispossessed by Ursula Le Guin. Did I even finish reading that? I've not, I've never been a huge Ursula K. Le Guin person and I feel like, I feel like that's an author I should appreciate more but just, I've never, I should try Earthsea again at least. Anyway, I think all these things can probably stay. I love Diana Wynne Jones, you guys probably know that already. So this was probably one of the first books by her that I ever owned. I don't think I need to bring that back home with me, but I have been trying to get my husband to try these again, so we might take that with us. All right, this uh, is some sort of Trojan War retelling from a time when I was buying anything Trojan War retelling and I do not think it was good. So that can go bye-bye. Uh, Orson Scott card I'll keep, but I don't think it needs to come with me. So I tried to get all my Agatha Christie shipped uh, to me already and apparently we missed some. So I think we can take that. Oh uh, yeah, look, we have more Orson Scott card. Okay, and here's something I knew I would have to talk about eventually. I have a ton of Marianne Zimmer Bradley books here, and I, I loved her books when I was younger. This is the, from the Darkover series. She also wrote sort of the Mists of Avalon books. And I don't usually like to talk about author controversies. This isn't really a controversy. She, um, you know, she legitimately did some very bad stuff and just thinking about it, I don't think I want to keep any books by her. So I think those are all going to be going. We're going to be getting rid of those. Everything is just collapsing. So we're going to have to go back and fix that. But yeah, um, uh, David Eddings also, I'll probably maybe leave here. Um, all David Eddings is kind of the same, but I don't know. It's a bit dated, but you never know. Maybe someday I will reread some. Probably not this series though. More Orson Scott card. I think that was fine. I honestly don't even know what this is. Some sort of history. 
thing. Um, I haven't read it. Maybe I'll get rid of it. Judith Tarr, again, probably will leave this here. Um, just never got super into her books, although she is known for writing about horses, I think. She has some articles online about how to write about horses if you're a fantasy author and how they're not just cars. I really like Cage Baker, but I haven't read this book. This, I think, was for a class in college. I am not a magical realism person. Uh, David Brin, I just reread the first book in this series. This is like the second book in the third trilogy or something like that. Maybe I'll get to it someday. This, I don't think I read this. I think I bought this at a used bookstore and did not read it. Uh, I mean, I have a complete Shakespeare back in our apartment, but I feel weird getting rid of Shakespeare. So we'll see. This, I might actually do a video later about some childhood favorites and sentimental books. This is my original copy of The Name of the Wind. I have no idea what this is. Oh, it looks like, looks like this was a used bookstore buy. Still don't know what it is. That can go. More David Eddings, more Agatha Christie. I'll pull that out later. I don't think that was very good. This is going to be really loud, but... Um, we have some of the Hornblower series. I think my father recommended these to me because he really liked them, and I, I think I read them, but it wasn't quite my thing. Uh, Madame Bovary, which I haven't read. More Orson Scott Card. That was a book for college. Oh, I love this book so much. It is so funny. It's basically an encyclopedia, like a, a, a fake encyclopedia of fantasy tropes. Uh, we'll look at this sometime. Uh, James Michener, wow, he, uh, this is the first book by James Michener I ever read. He sure churned out a lot of them in his time. Uh, if you like sort of epic novels that follow a single place, check out James Michener. Here's my original copy of Assassin's Apprentice. I've actually been thinking about rereading this. I didn't think I ever would just because the thought of rereading all of her books was exhausting, but uh, it's really been having a, a comeback on booktube and I should really try it again as an adult. I think this is the only thing I've read by Lee Modesset. How do you say it? Lee Modesset. I've seen this author around so much and I read this book and it was fine. All right, next shelf. Let's hope the camera doesn't run out of battery. Um, Citizen Tom Payne. Yeah, that's sort of classic historical fiction. I like that. Uh, oh, now we get into some of the really weird Robert Graves stuff. He wrote I, Claudius. He also wrote a bunch of other novels, some of which had some kind of weird things. So I know that sounds strange, but it's a historical novel about how Jesus was actually the, I think, grandson of King Herod or something like that. So um, yeah, if you like weird ideas and like, he, Robert Graves had this, he had this like Oh, I'm going to explain this so badly, but basically this idea about a, a universal goddess and all sorts of different mythologies. And he's kind of comparing like Greek mythology to Judeo-Christian mythology in this book. And I don't remember. It's pretty strange. Three Musketeers. Um, I've kind of stopped pulling stuff out, but I definitely, I want a copy of this uh, back at home. And I have to decide if I want this or my older version. These are... Well, they're not, they're old, they're not historical fiction, though I think they were about, you know, the time they were written. Um, the first, is the, the, sorry, I should actually say, The Foresight Saga by John Galsworthy. Galsworthy, yeah. Um, there's a pretty good TV series, like a British, you know, TV miniseries. I think this is another mediocre YA Trojan War retelling. Bye-bye. More James Michener, another bad... Actually, okay, some people really like David Gemmel. Uh, I think he was really influential in the genre. I think this is the only thing by him I ever tried to read and probably isn't the best thing and I did not care for it. Um, these are all sort of in, I think, kind of the same series as uh, Shogun. Um, I like Shogun, I don't know. So we got Spartacus, more classic historical fiction. Uh, the Black Griffin, I'll probably talk about this this is the one I used. I had so much Mercedes Lackey. I read so much Mercedes Lackey as a kid, all her Valdemar series. And this is the only one I kept because it was the one I fell in love with. And this is kind of a sentimental 
book for me, even though I'd be scared to reread it. Okay, now we have all the David Eddings. Don't worry, these are all basically the same book. And see, in here, The Redemption of Althalus, this one is basically all the tropes from his fantasy series just crammed into a standalone. So, you know, maybe you should read that one if you're curious about checking out David Eddings. Uh, Count of Monte Cristo, I did read that. I really like uh, Dumas, obviously. Um, we have my, I guess these are my first personal copies of Lord of the Rings. I have my nice uh, fancy edition I got shipped to me back in the apartment, but these are the movie tie-ins, of course. I got this when I was 13, and you can see they're either relatively well-loved or just not very good quality, but I was just obsessed with anything Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings movies, just, you know. Hardcore. Um, that's a Roman historical mystery series I never got into. This is the copy of The Three Musketeers I grew up reading. I think that was my dad's copy, probably. Dostoevsky, more Dostoevsky. Rebecca, I should reread that someday. Like I said, I've kind of stopped pulling stuff out um, to keep or to take with me because that's just too much for my arm. These are a bunch of not very nice editions. This was for a Russian lit class I did in high school. Uh-oh, we're collapsing. You can see my dragon. These shelves did not used to have room for anything like dragons. These guys were up somewhere else, but we've cleared out some stuff already. So, um, Sherwood Smith is an author I really tried to be into and bought a lot of books by when I was younger, and, and I think I just don't actually like her writing that much. This is the second or third book in a historical mystery series that, from what I remember, is quite good. Now we have lots of, well, we have one more Marion Summer Bradley book. That can go. Ooh, look, David Eddings. Uh, and we have Terry Brooks. I don't really know why I kept this. I'm not really a Terry Brooks person. I can get rid of that. Uh, we got more Diana Wynne Jones. This is really funny, Dog's Body, because it is um, kind of reminiscent of Harry Potter in that there is a, the main character is Sirius, actually the star serious, um, but he is falsely accused of a crime and exiled to Earth in the form of a dog where he has to prove his innocence. So, you know, maybe that rings some bells for you. I love Diana Wynne Jones. She's awesome. More Russian lit and some uh, Daniel Deronda. We got... Sorry for the shaky camera, guys. We got more Terry Brooks, which I don't think I'm gonna keep, but... I don't know. More David Eddings. This is some sort of anthology. I think I read that, but I honestly can't remember. I've been meaning to read more Guy Gavriel K. Oh, I love I love this series, you guys. I should I should take this. Um, I got my husband to read this one. He agreed it was cute. These are middle grade, kind of like King Arthur retellings, um, mostly about Gawain and his well, fictional squire Terence. They are just I don't know, cute and funny and endearing, a little bit sad. I don't know. I read these as an older teen and just they really spoke to me. Here we have mostly Harry Potter. Uh, this is another one in that uh, historical mystery series. I think the, the detective character is named Matthew Shardlake. That's all I remember. Um, yeah, so I read Harry Potter 6. It came out when I was at summer camp and then I loaned it to a very good friend after I read it and he lost my jacket cover, which is not the actions of a good friend. Uh, here's my copy of Anathem. I can't remember if I re-bought this uh, back home, but this is the book that I can't get anyone to like, sadly. I don't even like any other Neil Stevenson. That's kind of the sad thing, but I'm kind of... I read this book twice in a row and I've listened to the audiobook multiple times. It's it's pretty great, I think. Okay, now we're getting into more King Arthur stuff. Dante. I don't know these look like things I probably had to get for high school. Uh haven't read that. Seems interesting though. Ooh, okay, so here's the the first part of the Forsyth saga by John Galsworthy. I think I want that. Wow, I feel like this video is going to be so long. There's just a lot to talk about. This is a sort of family memoir by Lisa C, who's the author of some very popular sort of Chinese uh, women-themed historical fiction. 
basically telling the story of her, her family coming to America. This is a random volume in the Lenny Bud series by Upton Sinclair, which has been out of print for a long time, and I could probably find it now, but it's basically about this uh, main character, Lanny Budd, who was born in 1900 and basically goes through all the events of the 20th century and meets a lot of important people. Um, I think that was okay. Don't know. Arabian Nights, mixed feelings about that. Uh, Song of Roland. Yes, if you like epic poetry, I suppose. Pompeii. That was a very exciting one. Yeah, um, I didn't like this book. I don't think I finished it. I think I got it because the title is so good and I didn't like it. Um, more Shakespeare biography. This is all mixed up, guys. More King Arthur type, you know, epic poetry. All right, let's see if we can... Come on, camera. Focus for me. Focus, focus. We're on to shelf number two. This is going to be a long video, guys. It's going to be real fun to edit. Um, Dune Messiah. Which book is this in the Dune series? I did not get into the Dune series. I read like two or three though. I should maybe reread Dune before the movie comes out, something like that. Okay, we have a lot of Robin Hobb. I, I will probably take, uh, I will probably take some of the Robin Hobb with me. Oh, that's funny. This is some sort of, you know, Lord Darcy. This has nothing to do with Pride and Prejudice. This is some sort of really cheesy, like alternate, history detective thing. I don't think I would want to reread that, but it's kind of... I also think... I don't know why this publisher has the worst covers, but I bet this is a terrible cover. Oh yeah, that's that's real bad. <laughs> okay, bye. Uh, I should take this. All right, this the is, I think, a prequel to the Tales of the Atori series, where I have two more books of it over here. The first one is already at home. I don't even know if I would still really enjoy the trilogy anymore, but I didn't like this. More Robin Hobb. Oh, there is Dune. Um, maybe I should stop talking about every book. Um, Claudius the God. I have I, Claudius, with me back home, and I just, I've only read the sequel once. More Diana Wynne Jones. Okay, you guys probably don't know this, but I had an anime and manga phase from mid high school to my early 20s, and apparently I kept DVDs of this series. Which, honestly, there's part of me that would secretly probably still enjoy watching that. Gore Vidal creation. I know I read a lot of historical fiction by Gore Vidal, and I, I don't even remember what this one is about. I feel like Persia. I feel like this is the Vampire Chronicles up until it gets weirder. That's as far as I got, really. This is one book in a quartet called the Alexandria Quartet. This isn't even mine. This belonged to my parents. I don't know. I have just this one up here. I think this is more Gore Vidal about Julian the Apostate. I th he's the, the Roman Emperor. Okay, well, I just realized my camera's been upside down for a minute, so hopefully that won't affect things. If not, if it's all upside down, sorry guys. He was the emperor who tried to convert the Roman Empire from Christianity back to, uh, you know, it feels weird saying paganism, but yeah, the Roman gods, and I think it briefly worked and then didn't. Dan Simmons, Ilium. Um, yeah, if you like Hyperion or other, you know, weird books by Dan Simmons, I think that's probably good. Uh, that's about World War One. Here's more of the Gerald Morris uh, Squire's Tale books. This was some sort of authorized Sherlock Holmes sequel. Secret. This looks like, I, I don't know where that's from, but bye. Uh, I apparently have one Miles Rokosigan book here and I don't know why, so I should really take that. This is a nonfiction about the charge of the Light Brigade. Actually very interesting. Flash for Freedom. The Flashman series, I don't know how this would um, come across today, but it's basically historical fiction about a character that's technically taken from another book um, called, I think it's Harry Flashman, but anyway, he's basically this character who is incredibly cowardly and villainous, but keeps ending up in situations where he kind of comes out looking like the hero. So it's, it's just kind of a very funny concept. All right, guys, we're making progress. Uh, this is more some essays and nonfiction. I don't know. Oh, look, more Agatha Christie. I don't know what all these things are. Um, 
penguin. These are like historical atlases. I feel like this is what Wikipedia is now for. Uh, more Shakespeare. How many random Shakespeare do I have floating around? I think that's, I don't think I need that. I don't really know what this is. More Sherwood Smith. We have a dragon. Some unicorns. Yeah, more dragons. My husband said he thinks this is creepy, this cat. I think it's fine. I don't know. Obviously, you guys already heard that the Black Griffin was a very important book for me, so of course I had to get this Black Griffin. And now we have this whole kind of classic section. You've probably already noticed I had a lot of Greek and Roman things. I went through a phase in high school before I decided to become a musician where I was really interested in studying classics. Um, so yeah, some of these, I don't know if I'm supposed to have all of these, but we got some textbooks from high school Latin as well as some other things. We have two translations of the Aeneid and we have a textbook for uh, ancient Greek because senior year I was actually supposed to take Greek at the local college and then I realized I could not audition for music school and take a college language class. So I dropped, I did not do that. Those last two, the Greek myths, those are the Robert Graves encyclopedia. Basically, if you want all the weirdo versions of myths, this is a great reference. I almost don't even have room to stand over here, so this should be interesting. Um, Doomsday Book by Connie Willis. I have a copy of that back home. Oh, these are the only Dragonlance books I kept. Yeah, I feel like those of you who are Dragonlance fans might be disgusted that these are the ones that I kept, and I don't really know why I still have them, but the Majir twins were my favorites, and I, I really liked Raceland because, I don't know. Oh, uh, we have a bunch of Carol Berg on this shelf. I think, yeah, Transformation, I think, was the first one. I don't know, I have really, this was sort of when, when more like grimdark, like Robin Hobb style dark fantasy was kind of becoming a thing. And that sort of like first person, dark, more like emotional, personal, character driven fantasy. Uh, I think Carol Berg really writes in that vein. And do we have people home? And I think we might have a guest soon. Oh, and we have a guest. Is it okay that I'm showing this? Yeah. Oh, you are wet. It's raining outside. Yeah. Hi. Emma. Dang, you got me in the mouth this time. Why don't you turn around? Emma. Get Leah. Oh, nope, she's going. My parents' dog loves my husband much more than me. Anyway, where was I? Carol Berg. Okay, so I tend to really like her first books and then I feel like she's such a discovery writer that it's like there'll be a big twist at the end of book one and then again at the end of book two and then by the time you get to book three, like who knows. Uh, that can go. Again, even when I was middle grade age, I was not a huge middle grade person, but I have a soft spot for Ella Enchanted. This was my first ever Brandon Sanderson book, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so yeah, we got the paperback of Mistborn. Uh, this I think I bought at an older age and it's just living here. Nedia Korafor, Who Fears Death. That's very dark, but, but good. I like, I actually have read one of her young adult books and I liked that too. That can go. Uh, this uh, series by Garth Nix was pretty popular when I was younger. I'm not sure if it still is. Mary Renault, she did, I think was some of the earliest books that really, like mainstream books that featured gay characters, I think. She did a lot of historical fiction about Alexander the Great and stuff like that. This I have not read. My arm is getting tired. Here are my copies of uh, A Song of Ice and Fire. We have those two in paperback. And then I think down here, we have A Storm of Swords in 
the trade paperback and then uh, from when it came out, because I think I bought it right when it came out, A Feast for Crows, and that is where I stopped reading the series. Um, what else? We got more Carol Berg, more Marion Zimmer Bradley, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and Asimov, which I'm also not, I don't know, I think I'm not a fan of that style of science fiction so much. I know it's a classic, but I think I gave it a fair trial. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, yeah, I'm a Jane Austen fan. More Carol Berg, more Marion Zimmer Bradley, I'll come back and clear all this out. More Carol Berg. Uh, I think you guys already saw this. More Marion Zimmer Bradley. Uh, we got some Tintin comics down here, and then a copy of, I think this, Year of the Griffin by Diana Wynne Jones, I think this is a an arc that I accidentally stole. It was an accident, like I took it home and forgot to bring it back from like a middle school classroom. Oops. Now we have a bunch of Tolkien stuff. Yeah, I bought all this. Uh, I don't think I read all of it, but I have read The Silmarillion more than once. Uh, we have Narnia. And my camera is really trying to focus on that picture of George Orwell right there because it's a person. So I don't know how this is going to look. Um, Naomi Novik, that's the second book in the Temeraire series, 1984. Oh, I think I rebought a copy of The First Man in Rome. I, I think I didn't finish the series, but I did like it. Gone with the Wind I read as a kid. Probably won't read again. Uh, this, I have, uh, it's not really showing on the camera, but that's The Hound of the Moor again. That's a, I think, young adult, sort of Celtic, Irish fantasy. I think I liked it pretty well. Um, more Marion Zimmer Bradley. We are almost done, guys. You can tell I'm running out of steam here at the end. Um, more Mary Renault, mostly, it looks like. And The Last Light of the Sun by Guy Gabriel K. That feels like a good one to end with. I feel like I've only read, like, the weird K, like, the stuff that most people don't read. I should really read more by him. All right, so... Behind me are all the books that we unhauled. I think I talked about a good number of them, but maybe not all of them because after I finished filming, I just went through and pulled a lot more stuff off the shelves to try to get everything sorted. But the video got kind of long, guys. Hopefully you guys forgive me for running out of steam towards the end. Now I have to bag all of these up and remove them. So I don't think I need to film that, but thanks for watching. Let me know if anything you guys saw on here uh, sparked any nostalgia for you. I know it did for me. And until next time.